Professor Meredith at Harvard Law School and author of the book, The Price of Principle, Why Integrity is Worth the Consequences. Professor Alan Dershowitz joins me. Good evening, sir. And Senator Graham says, uh, appoint a special counsel. Uh, are, you know, is that a good idea, bad idea? We're going to have dueling special counsels. Do we expand the jurisdiction of Jack Smith, the special counsel investing in Donald Trump? What do we do? I have never been a great fan of special counsel because they come in with uh, sub somebody with a target on their back. But if you're going to have special counsel, you have to have them equally applied. And so, yes, if you're going to have a special counsel investigating Trump, then you should have a special counsel investigating uh, any of the Biden issues. Um, look, I think the biggest beneficiary of uh, this disclosure has been Donald Trump. I just think it'd be impossible now to prosecute Donald Trump um, without going after Biden, and they're not going to go after Biden. The facts are different. Some of them cut in one direction, some of them cut in the other direction. But the public perception is you have two people in public office, both of whom has handled classified material, and you can't prosecute one without going after the other. So I think and hope that neither will be prosecuted. You know, I don't look. Uh, you're not supposed to have classified documents when they're no. when you shouldn't have them. I mean, that's plain. That's that's the law. But you know, there's a huge part of me that sees that it would make a lot of sense to sort of a moratorium on this particular one for these two men. Let it both go because I don't know what we're going to achieve. In, except that it's you know it's it's great. It's the full employment uh, program for cable news. But I mean, see, on, a, on a serious matter, so what is this going to achieve for the for the for the American people to do this for the next? two or three years to both men, no. and, and not, you I just think a moratorium would be smart. I agree with you. I suspect also if we dug deeper, we'd find lots of former public officials, including former presidents and vice presidents, who probably had material in their basement and probably had possession in order to help them write their memoirs, never for an illegitimate purpose. I don't think any former uh, or current president has ever done anything like this in order to hurt the United States. It's just a matter of convenience. Sandy Berger is the perfect case. He stuffs the, it is in his stock in order to help him write his memoir, and he was appropriately uh, sanctioned uh, for that. That may be the extreme case, but I suspect there'll be other cases as well. What we need is less classification. There's too much classification. We need one standard of justice for all that would apply to Democrats and Republicans alike, and we need to end this witch hunt. And 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 from the but for this day forward, put everybody on notice that we're not going to tolerate it. I mean, I I, I don't well, we want you know classes to have it sort of open season on getting classified information in the hands of people who shouldn't have it. But I tell you, there are things that I find quite annoying here, and that's the lawyers, at least so far from the White House. The White House will not tell us with this other location. I mean, what's the big secret where these other documents were held that NBC has now reporting? I mean, why are they playing that cat and mouse game with us? Just tell us. It's transparency. They work for us. And, uh, you know, we're going to find out anyway. But instead, it's their cagey. It, it doesn't seem to me to be a wise thing to withhold that information, unless it in of itself is classified. And it's hard to imagine a scenario where the place of location uh, would involve national security. So um, I think the White House counsel, and they're very good people. They're excellent lawyers. I know um, several of them. Uh, they're trying to do their job right. And I think but are they are they doing their job? Do Who it. do they work for? When they sit on the documents, when they discover it a week before election day, and they sit on them past until yesterday, are they working for the American people as White House counsel paid by the taxpayers, or is their job to protect the presidents of something politically embarrassing? I don't think it through the election, the midterms, and but you know, is a who who does who's the White House counsel work for? Well, I actually taught a whole course on that when I was at Harvard and teaching legal ethics. It's one of the hardest questions. Um, you have sometimes the president has a personal lawyer. Uh, sometimes that personal lawyer interacts with White House counsel who works for the people of the United States. And then you have the White House people who are surrounding the president who work for this particular president, not for the presidency. And often there's a lot of confusion as to what the nature of the lawyer-client relationship is. But in general, in this area, there should be full disclosure and transparency. And I'm confident it will happen. It's only a question of when. I think a lot of people are embarrassed about the timing here, and they're trying to cover their own rear ends. And uh, let's hope that the right thing is done and the American public knows as soon as possible 
how much information there was, where it's being held, why it was being held, and all of the information. There, I don't think that uh, would hurt the end the American public. I, I, I must admit, admit I'm enormously curious about one thing: is that the set of the topics in the first batch of documents was Iran, the UK, and uh, Ukraine. And Ukraine was the time that was when the vice president, vice president, was in charge of the Ukraine policy in the Obama administration. He gets out. His son is still on the board. And let, look, let's face it: that that board job, you know, there's, we know why he was the on the board of the, that uh, energy company in Ukraine, Burisma. I, I just want, I just want to clear the air. Just tell us what the what the relationship was of those Ukraine documents in his in his possession, and then I'll be done with it. Um, but I am curious about that one. No, I agree with you, and I think the information should be disclosed because it's probably no longer classifiable. It's old information. And let it all be laid out there. Let the public decide and uh, let the public see what there is so that they can effectively criticize and challenge government actions. That's critical in a democracy. Professor Alan Dershowitz, thank you, sir. Thank you.